Good morning po sa inyong lahat. For the last four Sundays, we are talking about breaking curses. And uh, last Sunday, it was a recording. So some of you, nakita ko na, <laughs> want to have some questions. Uh, mamaya po, you can, uh, you can have some questions or comments. Hindi nyo po gano'n na intindihan yung aking ipinapaliwanag. Now, before we go to what we call generational blessing, I'd just like to summarize the whole, uh, dito yung apat pong lesson natin tungkol sa breaking of curses. Uh, naunawaan po natin na yung generational curses is a... Uh, something that is in our bloodline. Ang tawag po doon is iniquity. And iniquity is what? A transgression or the breaking of the law. So the moment na meron pong legal uh, impediment yung pag-break ng law. So hindi lang ito makukuha lang basta prayer, kinakalang ma-fulfill ma -fulfill muna ang requirements of the law. Kwanyo po. Kasi sabi ni Lord na yung kasalanan ng ating mga ninuno, it runs from third to fourth generations. So, in the past, we've been, you know, praying, declaring, rebuking about these curses, pero no effect, wala rin mong epekto at pabalik-balik din o nararanasan para na natin yung consequence ng mga kasalanan ginawa ng ating mga ninuno. So the reason is, there is a law na nagko-cover doon po sa uh, generational curses and that is what? The inheritance law. Sabi dito sa Romans, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how the law had dominion over a man as long as he, sleep, as, as he liveth. For the woman which had a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lived. So Paul made an example here na uh, tayo daw ay we are bound to the law. So the moment we don't follow the law or subscribe to the law or obey the law, we are what? We are being cursed. Okay? Nakakurse tayo. Okay, now, ganun din yung in example niya, yung babae, na as long as she is uh, married to a to a man, he is bound to her husband as long as he lived. But if the husband be dead, she lose from the law of her husband. So, pag namatay na yung lalaki, so malaya na yung babae. So then, if while her husband lived, she married to another man, she will, be, she will be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law, so she is no adulteress. Though she be married to another man, wherefore, my brethren, you are also become dead to the law by the body of Christ. See? Sabi ni Lord, ganun din na nangyari sa iyo. So, nung tinanggap mo ang Panginoon sa Kristo at nung siya namatay sa Cruz na Kalbaryo, kasama kanyang namatay. So, what happens? You become dead to the law. And that you should be married to another. So, we can now marry Christ. That's why ang tawag ni Paul sa... Sa Ephesians chapter 5 is what? The bride of Christ. So, sinasabi dito ng Panginoon na you can now marry Christ. Even to Him we raise from the dead that we should bring forth fruit unto God. So, dahil we are now dead to the law or to the principle of the law of sin and death, we can now marry Christ. So, the only way for us to be free from the tyranny of generational curses and genetic anomalies is when we marry Christ. Nakuha niyo po? Because remember, the sin that we have is not in the brain or it's not in the mind. It is more on nasa genetic level yung kasalanan. Kaya may mga bagay, sabi ni Paul, na mabubuti, na gusto kong gawin, hindi ko magawa. May mga masasama na ayaw kong gawin pero nagagawa ako. Then he explained the principle of sin or the law of sin and death that is still operating in his body. And that is what we call the 
genetic mutation na nangyari sa atin. Because in the discovery of the genetic science, na found out ng mga scientists na ano, it is in our DNA, in our blood, na andun yung ano, yung ating profile, yung ating mga personality, even yung ating mga kasalanan na nagawa at gagawin, nakalagay din doon yung mga kasalanan na ating namana sa ating mga ninuno. So nakuha niyo po. At sagot dyan, ni Lord, eh, hindi lang basta prayer. Kinaka lang maintindihan mo ang legal thing na ginawa ni Lord nung siya ay namatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo. So, ang nangyari, nung si Kristo ay namatay, namatay ka rin. Kasi kinakailangan mamatay ka para you will be set free from what? From the law. Nakuha niyo po. Because if we will not be set free from the law, we will always be cursed. Narawaan niyo po. That's why ang sabi ng Bible, without the shedding of the blood, there will be no remission of sin. Why? Because the sin is in our G DNA. And the only one that can cleanse, cleanse our DNA is only blood. That's why in the Old Testament, ang, ang shadow na ginagamit doon is what? The blood of the animals. It covers the sin of the Israelites. Okay, but uh, in the New Testament, it is now the blood of Jesus. That's why nung tayo na born again, mga kapatid, literally, I tell you, the blood of Jesus cleanses our blood. Now, kinakailangan natin manampalataya because the Bible says, nagtanong yung mga disciples, Lord, what can we do that we can do the works of God? Ang sagot lang na Jesus, believe the Son of God. So I do believe setting us free from generational curses, what you need to do is to believe what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. So it is the overturning of the power of the inheritance law. Because sa ating mga magulang, hindi lang itsura ang ating namana. Kasama po yung ating mga ano, kasalanan nila namana natin. So we have to overturn the power of inheritance law over our lives. Like for example, here on earth, there is what we call the law of gravity. And the only way you can defeat the law of gravity, you need to apply another law. And what is that law? The law of aerodynamic. Kaya yung mga aeroplano, helicopter, nananatili sa air, sa air, is because of the law of aerodynamics. Now, there is a law of sin and death. And the only way that we can be set free from the law of sin is death, of death is the law of what? Uh, spirit and life. That's why sinasabi sa atin, Lord, we need to walk by the spirit. We need to walk by faith. po. So, there is a, the power of inheritance law. Namana mo yun eh. So, kinakalang makat up yun. And the apostle tells us that the law has dominion over a person as long as he or she lives. And a woman with a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. Ganun tayo. Kaya nung tayo yung nakalaya, pinalaya ni Kristo, we can now marry him. So, but if the husband dies, the woman is loose from the law of her husband. So, God uh, uses this physical marriage to explain to us what happens when we got born again. There was a spiritual marriage that took place. So while her husband is still living, a woman who marries another man shall be called an adulteress. So but if her husband is dead, she is free to marry another husband. So born again believers have died to their first husband. The old nature and its deed to the law. We were dead to the law so that we can marry to Christ. So, the Bible calls the flesh the old man. Okay? So, while we were married to our old nature, the law of sin and death has a complete dominion over us. Kaya may mga bagay kang gusto mong gawin, mabuti, hindi mo magawa. It's because of that. Coincidentally, the law of sin and death is the same law that governs every life form in the universe that is 
under the power of sin. Okay? So, this means that the law of sin and death is the primary law that governs generational curses and genetic anomaly. Kaya, yung kasalanan, it is more on what? On a genetic level. Kaya, mahirap nating itong mapagtagumpayan. Kahit anong discipline ang gawin mo, kahit anong uh, pagpursiging gawin mo, you will always fail. Why? Because the sin is in your DNA. And the only one that set us free from that genetic anomaly is in the blood of Jesus. So for as long as we stay married to our first husband, the old man and his deeds, the law of sin and death will continue to have dominion over us. Kaya kahit tayo mga kristyano na, pag hindi natin naunawaan na tayo pala ay ano, yung ating old man and his deeds, their old husband is already dead. Diba? We are dead from our old marriage. Kasi ang kinat ni Lord nung siya inamatay sa Cruz ng Calvary is the power of the covenant. Remember what I've taught you that the spirit realm operates on a principle of law. So in a covenant, pag hindi mo ginawa yung covenant, pwede kang sampahan ng kaso or contract. Diba sa lupa, may kontrata ka, hindi mo pinangatawanan yung kontrata, you can be sued for, ano, for breaking on the contract. Okay? And at the end of the day, you will pay. O, oh, pag napatunayan ng korte na, valid yung contract. Ganon din po sa spiritual realm. Nung tayo po ay na-born again, kung bago tayo ma-born again, there is what? A, a, we are in a covenant with the law. And the law says, kapag hindi ka nag-obey sa law, you will be cursed. Kaya, pag naunawaan natin na we are now married to Christ pala, we are not bound under the law of sin and death. So kung hindi mo ito alam, you will continue and the, the law of sin and death, I mean, will have, to con- will have dominion over your life. Because the word dominion simply means to rule over something. So everything that we wear apart from Christ, which include our natural lineage, is part and parcel of our old and regenerated nature. Okay? So, maliban kay Kristo, yung lahat na meron tayo ay ano, galing yan sa ano? Sa lumang pagkatao natin. Nakuha niyo po. So, the only way for this generational curse to be cut off in your generations is what? You need to overturn the inheritance law. Di ba? It is clear that we cannot be married to two husbands at the same time. Only one. And many believers, for most part, are guilty of committing spiritual adultery. Why? Because they constantly flip-flop between walking in the spirit and walking in the flesh. Now, what happens when we get married to Christ? Okay? And that is our what? Freedom. Ang sabi ng so, Romans, Romans 7, 3 to 4. So then, if while the husband liveth, she married to another man, she'll be called adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, so, uh, he made uh, the example of a natural marriage. And then sabi niya, My brethren, you also become dead to the law by the body of Christ. And sabi ng Romans, yung si Christo namatay, kasama kang namatay. And that should be married to another, even to him who raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. So Paul is saying you, need, you will be married to Christ. And because of that, you're married with Christ, that is your ticket to freedom. The solution to our complete deliverance from generational curses, which can overturn and reverse the power of inheritance law in our favor, 
stares us in our face. Naandyan na lang sa mukha natin, sa harapan natin, mukha natin. But the problem is because of our ignorance, hindi natin alam. That's why lack of knowledge, di ba? My people perish because of lack of knowledge. Our marriage to Christ offer us the ultimate solution. If we choose to put to death our old nature or our first husband, the institution of marriage is the fastest way to change the inheritance of any human being. Because remember, the inheritance law is the passage of anything from your from one generation to the next generation. Totoo na hindi lang masama ang naipapasa, even the good thing. But most of us are, are suffering from what our old uh, we are suffering from the generational sin that our forefathers passed unto us. Whether they like it or not, may ipapasa talaga nila yung ano, yung generational curses na yon. And the only solution is our marriage to Christ. Diba? Example, a woman or a man may be living in abject poverty, but should she marry a rich spouse, he or she immediately become a wealthy from the moment she say, I do. Because of the law of inheritance. Whatever belongs to his husband, uh, whatever belongs sa kanyang, her husband or to her spouse, sa kanya na yon. Diba? Sinasabi natin conjugal property. So if we die to the flesh, which our first husband the law of sin and death has no more power over us. So we are free to marry another. And that another in the passage in Roman is Christ Jesus. That's why in Ephesians chapter 5, sabi niya, a man will leave his father and mother and be and cleave unto his wife. And they shall become one flesh. So, kaya kung halimbawa si Maria, nagkasawa, Yung kanyang si Maria Reyes, pag nag-asawa siya ng Juan de la Cruz, magiging siyang Maria Cruz. At ang lahat na meron yung asawa niya, meron siya. That's why sabi ng Bible, you are, you are become, we become joint ears with Christ. Naging kasamang tagapagmana tayo ni Kristo. Bakit? We were married to Christ. Nanoan niyo po? So kahit anong strive niyo, to cut the general, generational curses, you will fail. It is only by believing what? Anong pananampalataya na natin that you are dead to your old husband and you are married to Christ. So yung inheritance law, naputol na. Tama niyo po? And the second part na dapat natin maunawaan, we need to denounce our natural lineage. Ano ibig sabihin ng denouncing your natural lineage? Kasi sabi niya, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. So, nung na-born again ka, remember the Greek word for born again in John 3, 3 is born from above. You were born from the heaven. So, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Philippians 3, 7, but what things were gained to me, I choose counted loss for Christ. So how do we benefit the most from our marriage to Christ? Ano ating na-benefit nung tayo'y nag-asawa kay Kristo? To benefit the most from our union with Christ, we must do what every single woman does when she gets married. Ano yung ginagawa niya? She legally and joyfully denounce her last name or yung kanyang maiden name, o yung kanyang lineage, in a public ceremony, in order to take on her husband's name. Diba? Diba sasabihin ng pare o ng ministro, I now present to you Mr. and Mrs. Kennedy. I now present to you Mr. and Mrs. Vargas. So yung wife ko, hindi na siya ibas ko. Ano nangyari sa kanya? He cut his lineage. At naging party na siya ng ano? 
ng lineage ko. So, ganun na nangyari kay Kristo. Nung tayo'y naging isa kay Kristo, we cut our lineage, our natural lineage. Kaya yung generational curses ay wala ng ano, power over us because the law has been satisfied. Nakuha niyo po? So the crowd of witnesses, sisigaw, yay! And no one of the wedding ceremony mourns at the loss of the woman's last name because it was to be expected. Di ba? Wala naman umiiyak doon dahil nawala na yung kanyang apelyedo. Even the parents will be excited that her daughter will be called another name. Di ba? Kasi nung nagpakasal yung anak niya, tinurender na niya yung kanyang authority over her daughter. One time nakita ko sa Facebook yung pangalan ng anak ko. Parang nablablang ko ako. Bakit ako herera na apelyedo ng anak ko? <laughs> Sabi ko, ayaw nga pala. Nag-asawa na pala yung anak ko. O, di ba? Kumisan, nagugulantag tayo. Di ba? Sometimes, we as a believer, iba na pala ang asawa natin. We are not bound to the law anymore. We are now bound to, bound to the Lord Jesus Christ. So why does the body of Christ hang on their old name or old nature even though they are now married to Christ? God wants to take His bride and His bride is us, the body of Christ, through a, cerem- to, through a spiritual ceremony of renunciation. Diba last week we made a prayer of denouncing our natural lineage. Di ba nagpray tayo na ay, sinasabi mo na ano, you dinidenounce mo ang iyong natural lineage. So, but I, w- I want you to listen carefully here. Huh? In this ceremony, God's people get an opportunity to legally denounce their allegiance to their natural lineage. Kasi whether you like it or not, that is a law. And the only way na mapuputol yan is when you go to the court. Di ba? Kahit marriage. Kahit pag gusto na mag-asawa na maghiwalay sila, their decision is not legal until they go to the court and file what we call annulment or separation. Sa, sa ibang bansa, divorce. Di ba? So, God's people get an opportunity to legally denounce their allegiance to their national lineage in order to embrace their full inheritance as the bride of Christ. So all generational curses and genetic anomalies are based upon our mother and father bloodline. You have to accept that. Whether you like it or not, it's based on their, ano, uh, on their genetic anomalies. Hindi man perfecto yung ating mga magulang. Simula kay Adan at Eva, makasalanan. So it makes the order of Melchizedek very valuable to humans who are challenged by demonic interference in a compromised bloodline. That's right. We have to understand this. A priesthood. Okay? So, this divinity, that's why they call it Jesus Christ. You see, Christ is not the apelyedo. Jesus is what? The human, uh, the humanity of Christ and Christ of Jesus, the word Jesus, his name Jesus is what? It expresses humanity and Christ is his divinity. So remember his divinity, Christ, has no genealogy. And his humanity, Yeshua, Jesus, has no genetically flawless bloodline. Has a genetically flawless bloodline. Ibig sabihin, yung kanyang bloodline ay pure ang DNA. Nakuha nyo? So, that's why ang tawag kay, ano, kay Jesus, the last Adam and the second man. Adam is the first man. Diba? So, before Adam fell to sin, they are perfect. He has a perfect DNA. Kaya nung si Jesus ay pinanganak, he has a perfect DNA also. That's why when his blood infused to our blood, we become what? Righteous. Tapuhan niyo po. Kaya nga, kinakailangan may magbuhos ng dugo 
that is the very purpose para yung genetic anomalies sa ating mga dugo ay ano, ma-remission, mahugasan. So our marriage to Christ is the antidote that will set us free from the poison of demonic influence in our bloodline. That's why when you get born again, your blood literally washes by the Lord and the blood goes through your brain, goes to your heart. Kaya nagbabago ang design ng heart mo. Nagbabago ang iyong mga bagay na mga mga bagay tungkol sa iniisip mo. ba? Diba? Repentance is what? Metanoia, changing the way you think. O, kaya nangyayari po yung nakakapag-repent tayo is because of the blood of the Lamb flowing in our bloodline, in our blood. But we cannot enjoy this incredible blessing if we are unwilling to denounce our natural lineage in favor of Christ Melchizedek Christus. That's why last week we pray. Sabi Lord, dinidenounce po namin yung aking uh, natural lineage and I am marrying to the Lord Jesus Christ. So, we must be willing to denounce our allegiance to our natural bloodline in order to inherit genetically lawless bloodline of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yun ang kailangan. So we have to do it by faith. You need to believe it. John 6.42 and they said, it, Is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he said, I came down from heaven? Because the Pharisees never believed that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And the people have to renounce their allegiance to their fathers and mother lineage. So that we can what? Married to Christ. So denouncing our natural lineage in order to embrace his holy prophetic bloodline, po, does not translate into denouncing our commitment and love for the families with whom he has blessed. Yun ang ibig sabihin nun. Hindi ibig sabihin na, Itatakwil mo na yung mga ano mo, mga kamag-anak mo, yung magulang mo. That's not what I'm telling you here. It is only prophetically you're denouncing what? The natural lineage kasi nga there is a principle of law. That is uh, yung inheritance law. Namahan mo yung kasalanan na yun eh. So in order for you to be set free from generational curses, kinakailangan mong ano? Pag-asawa. So pag nag-asawa ka, Yung iyong lineage ay nalipat na doon sa asawa, kaya you take the name of your husband. Nawa niyo po. Ganon din sa spiritual. So this spiritual act of denunciation actually elevate us to become kingdom ambassador to our natural family. We need to represent them because the Bible says, His promise is, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and your household will be saved. For them to be saved like you, then God needs someone. God needs a Moses in a family. Natatayo bilang ano? Uh, deliverer or ambassador. So what do you call an official who represents his government? In a kingdom, on a, on a foreign soil. Diba ang tawag sa kanya yan? Ambassador. An ambassador is the only person who can live on a foreign soil and be completely immune to the threats that reside in that country. Meron siyang tinatawag na diplomatic immunity. Hindi siya pwedeng kasuhan doon o idimanda ikulong doon. Why? Because he is what? An ambassador. Yung got, nakuha niyo po, yung uh, walang legal hold yung batas sa bansa na yun laban sa kanya. So if you choose to become ambassador of the kingdom of four families, God will make it sure that we are immunized or we are immune from any generational curses and genetic anomalies that is flowing for our natural families. Nakuha niyo po? So, puputuli ni Lord John eh. Oh, di ba nung you married to Christ, naputul na yon. Yung inheritance law was what? Cut off by another law. That is what? A marriage to the Lord Jesus Christ. Nakuha niyo po? And because of that, you are now entitled to what we call generational blessing. Nakuha niyo po? Tinan niyo po sa Exodus 20, 5 to 6. You must not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, I am jealous God, who will not tolerate your affection 
for any other God. So maliwanag sabi ni Lord, hindi ko yan ito tolerate. Ibig sabihin, God will do something. Hindi niya papayagan na ikaw ay patuloy na magsamba ka sa ibang Diyos. Okay? I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. So that is the law of inheritance. And the entire family is affected. Even children in the third and fourth generation of those who reject me. Ito ang pinakamaganda. But I love is unfading love. How many generations? A thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. Hallelujah! Most of the time, we focus more on what? On the, on the generational curses. Pero sabi ni Lord, there is a generational blessing. After we are delivered from generational curses and genetic anomalies, through what? Through cutting the inheritance law. And the only way you can cut the inheritance law is only marrying Christ, marrying to another husband. Because the Bible says, patay na yung dati mong asawa, and now you are free to marry Christ. So, you just need to believe. Nung kahit na born again, tinanggap mo si Jesus, you are married to Christ. That's why this law of sin and death has no more power over your life. So, God wants to help us break through the barrier of generational curses into a ref refreshing streams of generational blessing. And most of us are so focused, these insidious curses, and forgot what is written on Exodus 20 verse 6, a thousand generations. Oh. Diba? The first five verses in the 28th chapter of Exodus address the spiritual consequences of our disobedience to God. And God's intention is what? To bring us, His people, into what we call generational blessing. Gener generational curses can go up to the third and fourth generation, but whereas generational blessing can last up to a thousand generations. Ibig sabihin, kapag sumunod ka ngayon sa Panginoon, yung mga apo sa apo sa tuhod mo, sa talampakan mo, will continually experience the very blessing of God. Now, what is the power of this generational blessing? Sabi niya kay Abraham, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing in you and all the families of the earth shall be blessed. When we got married to Christ, what happens to us? We become Part, we become children of Abraham. In the spirit, we are the one that is called by God na ano. Diba pinakita ni Lord kay Abraham yung seashores. Sabi niya ganyan karami ang iyong magiging descendants. And then he looked up the sky, the stars. The stars there referring to us Gentiles who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the sun referring to the natural Israel. So when we got born again, ang naging, we become what? Partakers of the promise of God that He has given to Abraham, to the Lord Jesus Christ. And do you know that we are blessed to be a blessing? It does not matter your tribe, even your color, background, or race. What matters is that you are connected to the grace which Christ has made available for us. The moment you get born again, you become what? Part of the family of God. And the family of God, uh, represented by Abraham, the father of faith. And everything that, the, that God has promised to Abraham belongs to us also. So the blessing of God is mighty that it can reach out to people yet unborn. Kahit dun sa mga apu mo o sa mga anak mo na hindi na hindi pa na ipapanganak, they are part of this blessing. They will be blessed because the promise of God is what? Generational blessing. By the way, what is the blessing? The blessing is like an approval made on someone. 
Kaya sa Old Testament, kanilang part ng kanilang kultura or spiritual learning na nakuha nila sa Panginoon na yung magulang, bago sila mamatay, they bless their children. Nagre-release sila ng ano, blessing. Like Jacob, di ba? Nung i-bless yung kanyang mga anak, di ba? Each one, may binabanggit siyang mga specific thing para doon sa mga anak niya. Okay? Or it is a prayer or solemn wish imploring happiness upon another. Or it is like a benediction. That's why if you still have parents today, buhay pa ang ta, especially ang tatay mo, ask him to bless you. Because there is a generational blessing na ibinigay sa inyo, hindi lang curse, may blessing. So dapat maipasa sa iyo ng iyong nanay o ng iyong tatay. So kung buhay pa sila, take this time. Sabihin mo, Nay, can you bless me? Sabi niya, hindi ko alam. O gawa ka na lang ng, ano, ng prayer. O, Nay, can you pray this prayer for me? Pwede naman yun eh. So in other words, it is the act of pronouncing a benediction which will promote prosperity and welfare to a person. E di ba sabi ni Moses, the Lord bless thee. This is the way you bless the people. The Lord bless thee. The Lord keep thee. The Lord make his patience upon you. Give you. And the Lord turns his face towards you and give you. The blessing can be spoken out, written, and passed from generation to generation. Okay? Kung paano ang curse, Ganon ang, ang nangyayari na ipapasa from generation to generation. Ganon din din po ang, ano, ang blessing. See, the power of the generational blessing, according to Derek Prince, the word blessing daw is a word spoken with some particular form of spiritual power and authority for good or evil that sets in motion something that will probably go on from generation to generation. Kaya, maari sa pamilya mo, they spoke curse in your family. Kaya, makikita mo yung epekto niyan. Up, up, hanggat sa'yo, nararanasan mo yung epekto na yan. So, that's why, the only way to cut it off is what? You need to marry the Lord Jesus Christ. Diba? Life in death is in the power of the tongue. Where is the origin of blessing? Uh, it is first mentioned in Genesis chapter 12. And I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. The word blessing was first used in Genesis 12. And the first time a blessing was pronounced is recorded in Genesis 1.20. And this was not over a man, but on other creatures. Okay? Patahin natin. It was mentioned again in Genesis 1.28 when God pronounced it over mankind. Sabi niya, And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly and moving creatures. He that light and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open permanent of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that move, which the waters both forth abundantly in their kind, and every wing fall after his kind. And God saw that it was good, and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the sea, and let all multiply in the earth. So the word Blessing or bless was first mentioned not to man but to the creature. And the word bless in Hebrew is barak. In the original Hebrew translation, and it means to kneel. By implication, to bless God as an act of adoration or to bless man as a benefit. So benefit as used in this context is defined as an advantage or profit gained from something. So when you 
are blessed, you get a benefit. And that benefit is what? An advantage or profit gain from something. So something that produces good or helpful result or effects or that promotes well-being is called blessing. Okay? So, but the word blessing used in Genesis 12 is translated bracha in Hebrew. Ang ibig sabihin ay it derived from the word barak and it means a benediction by implication releasing what? Prosperity upon a person. So when you are blessed what happens is you are a container open at the top but close at the bottom. You get the point? When you are blessed, you are blessed. So, ibig sabihin, bukas, para kang container, bukas yung ibabaw, pero sarado sa ibaba. Okay? So, you allow the benefits flow into you, but do not necessarily let it to flow out to the other end. So, walang butas yung container. So, hanggang sa'yo lang ang blessing. You get the point? But when you are a blessing, what happens is you become a conduit, a, a tubo, or a pipeline for the manifestation of God's prosperity. You are not close at the bottom. May butas, may nakakabit na, na, na pipeline para makarating sa iba. Yun ang kaibahan ng blessing and bless. You get the point? Nung yung bunso ko ay, yung bunsong anak ko na naghanap siya ng trabaho, Eh, sa lahat ng mga in niya, hindi siya tinatanggap, nare-reject siya. Pero sabi ko sa kanya, anak, it is not your loss. It is their loss. Tangka niyo po. Because they do not know that you have something that would bless their companies. Pero kung alam lang nila yon, tatanggapin ka nila. Because you are a carrier of what? Or a blessing of the Lord. Oh. Kaya madalas, uh, ito madalas kong gawin, pag ako kumakain, naghahanap ako ng restaurant na walang kumakain. And I always find out it's true. The moment I sit there and start to declare blessing on that restaurant, makita mo magdadag sa ang tao. Maraming kakain. Sabi ko nga, if the owner will only knew what I have, baka sabihin pa niya ay ganito, Sir, pwede bang mupo ka lang dyan? On the house ang pagkain mo. ba? So, they will knew na you are the one that is carrying the blessing. One time, I'm greeting someone, happy birthday. And the Lord spoke to me. Say it with a gift. And I greet uh, that yung disciple. I greet ko yung asawa. Happy birthday. Kaya ko, pwede yung makahingi ng Gcash mo. Ang sagot sa akin, Pastor, nagkamali at kayo. Kaya ko, hindi ako nagkamali. I'm asking your Gcash and I will give you a gift. <laughs> so, if all of us will just be a blessing to other, it's not the amount. Oo, oh, di ba? Kaya sabi nga nila, yung Gcash daw, God cash na. Oh. You can bless someone on his birthday or on her birthday. Oh, di ba? So the abundance of God flows in from one end and out on the other end. So when you're blessed, there should be what? A conduit going to others. And these people fulfill their functions. And we can serve God's divine purpose. We are called to be a blessing, mga kapatid. When you are a blessing, blessing don't flow into you. They flow through you. Kaya po, yung inyong mga anak, mga apo, na hindi pa na ipapanganak, Kapatid, they are part of this generational blessing na hinanda ng Panginoon. 
One sign of an individual who is blessing, who is a blessing, is that they are always thinking of giving, seeking opportunities to give, and such people don't lack. Mga kapatid, example lang yan. Every time na may kaibigan ka na nag-post, so, di pa malalaman mo naman eh, kahit nakalimutan mo na yung birthday nila, kung may Facebook ka, friend mo sila, magpa-pop up yan. Oh, greet your friend. Today is your friend is celebrating his birthday or her birthday. Oh, send a chikas. Hello? That's a way to exercise of being a blessing to other people. Sa Proverbs 11, 24-25, Living Bible Translation, sabi niya, is it possible to give away and become richer? It is also possible to hold on too tightly and lose everything? Yes, sabi ng Panginoon, the liberal man shall be rich by watering others he waters himself. Sa Amplified, sabi niya, there is the one who generously scatters abroad and yet increases all the more. And there is the one who withholds what is justly due. O oh, diba? Justly due. Akin to. Pinaghirapan ko ito. Tama naman yun eh. But it result only in want and poverty. The generous man is a source of blessing and he shall be prosperous and enriched. And he who waters himself will be watered, reaping the generosity he has sown. Ano gusto nyo? Sarili ninyo, bless, or you want to be a blessing? Hindi niyo, mag-choose na lang kayo. Sinasabi ng Bible, ay, mamili ka. Kaya nga, is it possible to give away and become richer? Or it is also possible to hold on too tightly and lose everything? Sabi ng Bible, yes! Here, sabi niya, a mortal man received tithes. But there he received them of him of whom it is witness that he lives. Even Levi who received tithes, paid tithes to, through Abraham, so to speak he will still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. So sinasabi ni Paul, nung si Abraham ay nagbigay ng tithes kay Melchizedek, kahit yung apo niya, down the line, ang Levites, ay nagbayad din ng tithes at nareceive din yung blessing. So we see how Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek. But it was the Levites that did so while still in the loins of Abraham. Kaya kahit yung mga anak mo na hindi pa ipinapanganak, kasama sila dun sa blessing. So it gave us a picture of what a father can do to impact the lives of his children even long before they are born. Merong generational blessing siyang ipamamana. Nakuha niyo po. Kaya tandaan niyo po, yung lahat ng mga mga sakripisyo niyo kay Lord, yung offering, yung tithes niyo sa Panginoon, yung thanksgiving niyo kay Lord, it will be passed on to the next generation. So whenever we walk in the divine blessing or God gave us something we don't deserve, we have to realize that sometimes it is because someone in our family has made some sacrifices. Ako na-realize ko din. Kasi yung great-grandfather ko is a priest. And the Lord called me to be a pastor and I believe that's part of it. Na inheritance na naman ako doon sa aking mga ninuno. But this does not in any way suggest that you can obtain that blessing without aligning yourself through work and proper positioning. You have to align yourself with God. The good thing is, there is what? A generational blessing na nakahanda para sa iyo. So, what is, remember, the blessing is a covenant. There is a contract. The covenant that God made with Abraham tells us that He promised to bless Abraham's seed. Kasama po tayo doon sa pinangakuan ng Diyos. It's a covenant. The term seed refer to His children, the natural seed and the spiritual seed. That's why in Hebrew, yung bata at uh, eight day after birth, 
he is circumcised. Why he is circumcised? The circumcision is an act of covenant. Na yung bata na ito ay nakipag-ikinobinant kay Lord. Ano niyo po? Oh. Kaya sabi ni Lord kay Jeremiah, Before I form you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you to a prophet to the nation. There is a covenant. Blessing is what? A covenant. And Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. And nung namatay si Abraham, bago siya mamatay, I mean, ipinamana niya ang lahat kay Isaac. And then, mapansin niyo sa Genesis 26, nagkaroon ng famine in the land. Tingnan niyo. Sabi ni Lord, huwag kang pumunta doon sa Egypt. You remain in Gerar at magtanim ka. Remember famine? Walang ulan. Paano tutubo ang tubig? At ang sabi ng Bible, then Isaac saw in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord, what? Blessed him. Ito naisip ko lang. Paano tumubo yung lupa? Ay, yung, yung, yung mga tinanim niya na walang tubig. Siguro sa gabi, umuulan lang doon sa lupa niya. Or, si Lord nagpapadala ng tubig sa ilalim ng lupa. Doon lang sa lupa niya. That's why at the end of a year, he was able to harvest hundredfold. So when we have a covenant with God, this also affects our children after us because God is faithful. Faithful sa covenant. He is a God-keeping covenant. Hindi niya pwedeng hindi gawin yun. Oh, kaya nga nung si, si Joshua nakipag-covenant sa uh, Gibeonite, that's wrong. But God has to honor that covenant. Nung pinapatay ni Saul, yung mga Gibeonites, God has to curse Israel. Why? That's a law. A covenant is a law. It's a contract. So hindi mo pwedeng baliwalain yung kontrata. Because when you break the covenant, there is a principle of law. Yung nag-violate ng covenant, pwedeng idimanda. And there is a court in heaven. Oh, so if you break a covenant, there is a case pending in the court. Diba? And we will be what? Charged. At pag hindi ka pa sumipot sa korte, that's another problem. That is what? <laughs> Default judgment. So, and if these children also serve God, they too will experience a higher dimension of God's blessing. Yun mangyayari. Kaya kung yung mga anak nyo, nag-commit din kay Lord, mas matindi ang blessing na mapupunta sa kanila. Genesis 27, Therefore may God give you the dew of the heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty grain and wine. Let people serve you and nation bow down to you. Be master over your brethren, and let your mother's son bow down to you. Curse is everyone who curses you and bless those who bless you. So this is the blessing that God released to Jacob. Supposedly kay Isao. Diba? Pero, you know, what happens? The story, ninakaw ni Jacob yung blessing with the help of his mother. <laughs> and Isao was very angry upon hearing that the blessing has been transferred to his brother Jacob. Kaya nung siya lumapit kay, kay Jacob, ah, kay Isaac, Ano sabi ni Isaac? Wala na ako may bibigay sa iyo. Nakuha na ibigay ko na kay Jacob. Di ba? So, we know the story sa galit ni ano, ni Isa gusto siyang patayin kaya pinatakas ngayon si Jacob. Ngayon si Jacob pumunta kay Laban. Doon nagtrabaho. And we know the story na ang sabi ni Laban ay ganito. And Laban said to him, "Please stay if I have found favor in your eyes." For I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. Oh, sabi niya. Kung sabi ng tao, ng mga unbeliever, may daladala kang swerte. I was blessed because of you. Because that was the promise of God, di ba? Sabi niya, uh, Curse is everyone who curses you and bless be those who bless you. 
He openly admitted, Laban, his uncle, openly admitted the manifestation of his blessing was as a result of his alignment with Jacob. Because you have the blessing, you have the genera generational blessing that has been passed unto you because blessing is a covenant. The blessing only comes for those above you. But this implies to those older than you or higher in rank and position. So you release the blessing. Another example with regards to hierarchy and the blessing is Joseph and his brothers. Diba? Uh, multicolored. Diba binigyan siya ng sakay niya? Si Jacob ng multicolored colored na, no, na damit. And then he saw in heavens the sun and the moon bow down to him. Yung pala God is going to elevate him and bring him to Egypt. At magiging ano siya. Tandaan niyo po, he is not the second man in Egypt. He was the first man in Egypt. And Pero is under him. Bakit? Sabi ni Joseph sa mga kapatid niya, I was sent here by God to father Pharaoh. Napa-surprise nung na, nabasa ko yun. We interpret the scripture like Joseph is the second man. But in the spirit realm, he was not the second, second man. He was the very reason why Egypt was blessed and spared from the, you know, the famine because of Joseph. He was there, sabi niya, to father Pharaoh. He was the spiritual father of Pharaoh. So Jacob already had a blessing on him, though appears to have been done just verbally, but very operational. Diba? He is working on his father-in-law. Diba? Pero yung blessing niya, operational na kasi nabibless yung kanyang ano, father-in-law. Because there are individuals and even family serving as subordinates who carry a vast amount of gener generational blessing on them. Jacob had already had a blessing already on him. And Jacob had not experienced the manifestation of the blessing on himself in terms of resources. Kaya di ba nung huling panahon niya sa ano niya, uh, kay Laban, sabi niya binigyan siya ni Lord ng wisdom, di ba tungkol sa ano, uh, yung hayop na colored animals at nag-aanak ng ano, speckled or spotted. Anong ginawa siya? Binigyan siya ng Lord ng wisdom. Diba? Genetic science. Binigyan siya. Eh bago pa na-discover ng mga scientists, yung genetic science, o, oh, diba meron tayong tinatawag na GMO, genetically modified organism, ng mga GMO seeds, bago pa yung na-invento ng tao, si Jacob ay binigyan na ni Lord ng way how to do it genetically. O, oh, sa hayop. Laban experienced a significant increase in his business because of Jacob. Some of us working for other companies, working with other people, and they are blessed because of us. But time will come, the Lord will give you your own business. Because remember, God wants lahat ng resources na meron tayo is part of the kingdom of God. Because He has given us the power to create wealth so we can finance the expansion of the kingdom of God in the Philippines. Tandaan niyo po, building the kingdom of God is a very expensive one. Hindi madali. You need a lot of money and resources. That's why, gusto ni Lord na maunawaan natin that there is a gener generational blessing na nagpo-flow sa atin. He has given us the power to create wealth. Jacob did not stop working for Laban, instead applied wisdom to his work. And then, sabi sa Genesis 30 verse 43, And the man increased exceedingly and had much cattle and made servant and men servant and camels and asses. So this is Jacob. He was blessed by God. Diba? We are blessed to be a blessing. When you focus on being a blessing, God makes sure that you are always blessed in abundance. 
ni Joel Austin. So, don't focus on being blessed. Focus on being a blessing to others. Because if you focus on being blessing to others, you will always bless in a moment. Kasi paano ka magiging blessing kung wala ka namang blessing? Sige nga. So the presence of light dispels darkness and it also helps its user to see clearly. Ganon din ang blessing. How much more if a person who has been created in God's image able to utilize diverse features he or she has been endowed with to add value to our world? Diba? Gagamitin niya yung blessing na ibinigay sa kanya ng Panginoon. The power to create wealth. Sabi ni Mike Murdoch, you will be remembered either for the problems you solve or the ones you create. Anong gusto niyo? Be remembered on the problem that you create or the problems that you solve. I want to be a blessing. So all the intelligence, ideas, wisdom, favor, favors received, good breaks, a tender and compassionate heart, your gifting, be it in administration or ministry, talents, ability, you name it. Everything that God has placed in you is not for your lifting alone. They are also mean for others. Para sa iba yan. Hindi yan para sa iyo. So as you keep on pouring into the lives of others, God will keep blessing you the more. No, niyo po. So Genesis 12, 2-3, God told Abraham, and you and all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So it is through Abraham, all the families of the earth will be blessed. We become children of God and we become part of the lineage of Abraham and that promise belongs to us. And we can bless this nation. It is not the candidate. It is not the person na magiging presidente ang magbabago dito sa Pilipinas. It is the children of God. It is the body of Christ. That's why sinasabi ni Lord, He changes the time and season, He remove kings and replace one. So, we have to internalize this. Hindi tao ang pumipili ng presidente. Kaya hindi nyo kinakailangan magkaroon ng political loyalty sa mga kandidato na yan. Because at the end of the day, it is God that will choose the next president whether you like that person or not. Remember, we know in part and we prophesy in part. Di natin alam ang, ang end nito. O ilang, almost isang taon na kami nagpipray ng next president. Pero hirap kami na ma-receive ma specifically kung sino yung exact kong tao na yun. But we just believe by faith na si Lord ang maglalagay. Nakuha niyo po. So don't worry. May 9, after 12 hours, malalaman mo na kung sino yung susunod na presidente. Diba? And you believe that is the choosing of God. You better believe it. Because that is the promise of God. That is the covenant. God made a covenant to the Filipino people and God is going to bless this nation. Diba? Ang dami ng mga prophecy tukol sa Pilipinas. And I believe that is a covenant of God with us as His own people. Kaya, ito, forgive me, baka medyo magulat ang inyong doktrina. There is no such thing as permissive will of God. There is no such thing as permissive will of God. God has His only one plan. Plan A. Pag hindi nangyari yung plan A, Yung plan B, plan C, plan D, that is a plan of man. You get the point? Kaya ako naniniwala, sino man na maging presidente after May 9, that is the plan of man. Why? We intercede for that. We make petition on that in the courts of heaven. And God is righteous to fulfill His word. Nakuha niyo po? So God placed the blessing of all the families of the earth in one man, Abraham. And he has a generational approach to everything he created. 
Bakit inilagay lang niya sa isang tao? That's the way God it. God, that's the way God do it. Generational. Hindi lang yung curse, but the blessing. Manggagaling lang sa isang tao. Oh, remember in 2 Kings chapter 7, I'll just quent ko na lang ito, mahaba ito eh, di ba? Yung four leprous men sat at the gate of, sat the entrance of the gate reviewing their unfortunate situation, di ba? Nilusob sila ng Syrian army. Wala silang makain. So, sabi nila, Samaria was in great famine. Even though there is a prophecy of Elisha na magkakaroon ng maraming pagkain, sabi niya, kung tayo maghintay lang dito at wala tayong gawin, mamamatay tayo sa gutom. Kaya sabi, pumunta na lang tayo doon sa kampo ng, ng Syrian. Maputi na lang. At malay mo, pakainin tayo ng mga tao na ito. Kahit kalaban natin. Diba? And they went there. Pagdating nila doon, nagulat sila. Wala na yung mga Syrian army. Nagtakbuhan na at naiwan yung pagkain. And then sabi nung iba, ay, hindi naman po pwede na tayo lang ang kumain nito. Ipamalita natin doon sa ating mga kasama. Diba? This poor leprous become what? A blessing. In 2 Corinthians 9.11, Paul told the Corinthian church, while you are enriched in everything, for all liberality, which causes thanksgiving to us to God. So yung kanilang pagiging liberal in giving, what the result is what? Thanksgiving to God. Maraming mga nagpapasalamat. So this is not limited to the area of finances, but includes your field of expertise. When you bless people with your expertise, they thank God. Imagine what would happen if Abraham had not been a blessing unto others. Walang gripo yung kanyang tangke. So, di kanya lang yon. And always, the way of God is what? Is start with one, with a man. And then, magpo-flow dun sa tao na yun, yung blessing. As God had revealed that the blessing of others were stored up on the inside of Him. It's stored sa atin ni Lord. Kaya, responsibility natin na ano? Ipamigay yon. That is the inheritance that we receive from the Lord. And the inheritance is to be distributed. Example, salvation is part of the inheritance that God has given to us. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na, no? Sa'yo lang yon. Kaya sabi niya, freely receive, freely give. Dapat ipamigay mo. Kasi that's part of what? The rule of the blessing. It has to be distributed. So God wants us to bless others so that His name will be shared in the world at large. So God wants to be, for you, to be a blessing to them. Now lastly, the power of redemption. Sabi ng Joel 2.25, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army which I sent among you. Can you imagine? Isang taniman, isang pananim o malawak na pinanim, dinaanan ng swarming locos may natira. Kinain pa ng hopper, destroyer, and the cutter. So ano pa ang matitira? Wala na. Hanggang sa ugat siguro, ubus. So the restoration of generational blessing is something that is very important because people had been deprived from blessing that their parents and ancestors labored for. Whether you like it or not, yung mga ninuno mo, they labored for something para sa inyong kinabukasan. Kaso lang, hindi natin ito na-receive because of these generational curses. And this can affect cities, communities, and even countries, but it's not often emphasized. This nation of the Philippines is very rich in natural resources, in human resources, but why this nation is very poor? Oh. At yung ating mga ninuno ay nag so much para maranasan natin yung, ano, yung generational blessing na ipinangako ng Diyos. So as a leader of a family, organization, and even a nation, have you identified blessing that is due to you and your people because the sacrifices of generation before yours? Bakit yung mga ninuno natin, mga heroes, pinaginaldo, yung mga katipunero, bakit sila nakipaglaban? 
para sa ano, kalayaan ng Pilipinas. Pinaglaban nila ang kalayaan ng Pilipinas. Oh. Because they want us to experience that blessing. Some blessing were not added to your parents or grandparents even though they were entitled to get them. Bakit? Takat eh. Kaya ang promise ni Lord, i-restore yung mga blessing na hindi natin natanggap. You can call them back. This is what they call the power of redemption. And you can have it legally. Call it back to you. Lord, yung lahat ng nawalang opportunity sa amin, ipinangako mo sa amin. Call it back. It will come. The act of getting back is called the power of redemption. And redemption means which was lost is reclaimed and brought back in. In the old covenant, Adam lost in the garden was restored by Jesus Christ through the new covenant. Adam did not lose a religion. What Adam lost is the rulership on the kingdom of God. That's why when Jesus came, sabi niya, repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent for the kingdom of God is in you. And the rest, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it was restored back to us. Yung lahat na nawala. Kaya nang Hosea 4.6, sabi niya, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So this is the story on 2 Samuel chapter 9. This is about David. Diba? Nagtanong siya. Tinanong niya yung kanyang katulong na si Ziba. Is there still anyone left of the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Remember, David has a covenant with Jonathan. And now there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Sheba. And they called him to David, and the king said to him, Are you Sheba? And he said, I am your servant. And the king said, Is there not still someone of the house of Saul that I may show kindness of God to him? Sheba said to the king, There is still a son of Jonathan. He is crippled in his spit. The king said, Where is he? And Sheba said to the king, He is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel at Lodebar. Then King David sent and brought him from the house of Machir, the son of Amiel at Lodivar, and Mepe Boshet, the son of Jonathan, son of Saul, came to David and fell on his face and paid him homage. And David said, Mepe Boshet. And he answered, Behold, I am your servant. And David said to him, Do not fear, for I will show you kindness for the sake of your father Jonathan. And I will restore to you all the land of Saul, your father, and you shall eat at my table always. See? It was restored back. Even though Saul, nung panahon ni Saul, pinapapatay ni, ni Saul si David dahil sa inggit. But David never retaliates. Diba? Instead, he blessed Saul and his family. Diba? And he paid homage and said, What is your servant that you should Show regard for a dead dog such as I. See? Yung anak ni Jonathan, ang tingin sa sarili niya, he is a dead dog. Hindi lang basta dead, but dog pa. Oh. Bakit ganyan? Magpapakita ka ng goodness sa akin. Then the king called Sheba, Saul's servant, and said him, All that belong to Saul and all his house, I have given to your master grandson. And you and your son and your servant shall till the land for him and shall bring it produce that your master grandson may have bread to eat. See, pati yung katulong ni ano, ni Saul, oh, dyan ka na maglilingkod sa anak ni Jonathan. And you're going to till the land at lahat ng produce dyan, ibigay mo dyan sa anak ni Saul, o oh, anak ni Jonathan. But may peboshet, your master grandson shall always eat at my table. See? That is the favor that the King David showed to the son of Jonathan, it was restored back.
another story is King uh, that you can find it in the book of Esther. It's about Mordecai. On that night, the king could not sleep. Kinan niyo po ha? The Lord causes that king para hindi siya makatulog. Para ano? And he gave orders to bring the book of memorable deeds. Kasi the king has a memorable deeds. Noong mga taong gumawa ng mabuti sa kaharian, nakasulat doon. And because of that night, hindi siya makatulog. And I believe that's the Lord who caused this king to be, you know, uh, to look for that book of memorable deeds. The chronicles and they were read before the king. And it was found written how Mordecai has told about Big Tana and Teresh, two of the king's eunuch who guarded the threshold and who had sought to lay hands on the king Asuserus. And the king said, What honor or distinction has been bestowed to Mordecai for this? And the king's young men who attended to him said, Nothing has been done for him. Hallelujah. Kaya sabi nung ano, nung hari, bigyan ng award, bigyan ng i-restore back sa kanya ang para sa kanya. Remember, there is a book of remembrance. Everything that we did, kahit hindi yan alam ng tao, mga kapatid, it will be remembered by the Lord. Itong hari nga na ito, eh, God caused this king not to be sleep, to be able to sleep that night. And God caused this man to look for that book of remem- memorable deeds. At nakita niya na itong si Modica hindi pa pala nabibigyan ng ano ng award, ng reward. Ganon din tayo. Time will come. God is going to restore back lahat na pinaghirapan niyo sa Panginoon. Kaya sabi niya, nun sabi niya, huwag kayong pahinaan ng loob. Di ba sabi niya, hindi makakalimutan ni Lord ang lahat kong ginawa. You should never be afraid because in Esther chapter 6 that we should read proves to us that God's sovereign hand control the event. Nothing can stop your restoration. Everything that was stolen from you by the devil, God is going to restore it back. Why? Because there is what? A generational blessing that the Lord has given to you. He will activate them into remembering you and what is due to you. Proverbs 21 verse 1, The king's heart is like a stream of water directed by the Lord. He guides it wherever he be. It doesn't matter when, where you are right now. But there are people that God has stirred up to set up things for you. The blessing that is coming. God will use other people na hindi ka man kilala para padaluyin ni Lord sa buhay mo ang blessing na yan. That is part of that generational blessing that you have promised upon you. God will orchestrate a situation that will facilitate the release of that blessing from a source unexpected. Baka na lang may darating dyan sa account mo na pera na kailangan mo, God can do it. Or someone can call you at sabi niya, inutusan ako ni Lord. Marami ng mga testimony ganyan. So God in His infinite mercy has positioned a person or an institution that will make restoration possible. For you. Am I making life more comfortable or more difficult for the generation coming after me? Can my faithfulness and service to God and humanity extend to the fourth generation more than fourth generation? We must live our lives in a way that will cause the people coming after us. Today, let's go to the courts of heaven. Let us make some declaration today. Father, thank you for the favor that I have before you and man. I declare that people go out of their way to bless me and to help me because of the generational blessing that are operational in my life. I have favor with everyone that I deal with and come in contact 
with today. Doors that were once closed are now open for me. I receive preferential treatment and I have special privilege as a result of the blessing inherited from my ancestors. I declare that I am God's favored child. I declare that the people responsible to reconcile me to every blessing due me has been strategically positioned. I also declare that they will find me through Jehovah's influence. My Father God, as I stand before your court, I pray that you strategically position everyone who has a link to the place of influence that involves my generational blessing. And Lord, us, I ask that you cause them to find me in due time. I declare in prayer that God has steered the hearts of the people in authority, a position towards me, people who have the power to release every blessing that is due me because of the sacrifice made by my ancestors. I declare that some very powerful people are losing sleep to do me good. I declare that serious deliberation are taking place to favor me. And I declare that an impromptu committee has been formed to set up and commission on strategies that are favorable to me. According to Deuteronomy 1.11, I declare that I have wisdom beyond my years and that I accomplished dreams that did not originate with me. In Jesus' name, Amen. Lord, today, we are making a special prayer and declaration that our families will receive everything that was lost because of generational sin and help us to believe father that you have given us the generational blessing and this generational blessing will last to a thousand generations we thank you so much and we are making a special prayer for the nations of the philippines lord we are in a crossroad today Tomorrow, we're going to make some, to exercise our political right. And we are standing before your court, Lord, and believing in the laws of the kingdom that it is you who changes the time and season. You are the one who removed kings and set up one. We declare today na ang mapipiling presidente it's not the choosing of men, but it is the choosing of the council in heaven. And Lord, ngayon pa lang, nagpapasalamat na po kami. Whoever that person, whether we like her or him or not, we believe that person is the perfect will. Because the next president is part of the generational blessing that has been prepared for us for this time, Panginoon. Maraming salamat po, Panginoon. We continually bless you for intervening in the affairs of men. We're giving you legal right, Father, to intervene in these elections, especially that the agents of the fallen son cannot touch the hands, cannot touch the election computers o hindi sila pwedeng mandaya. O anumang Panginoon na pandaraya na ginawa na nila ay hindi po ito matutuloy. You're going to expose it, Father God, lahat ng ginawa nilang pandaraya. At kahit anong propaganda ang gagawin nila to control the minds of the people, hindi po magkakaroon ng katuparan. 
because we as your intercessors here in the Philippines, Lord, we are standing before your court, Lord. And as a Filipino citizens, Lord, kami po ay merong legal right na magpetition sa iyong korte ngayon para hingiin ang malinis na eleksyon, Panginoon. At ang lahat na mahahalal simula sa presidente hanggang konsihal sa mga lo sa local government, it is all appointed by God. Yun po ang aming pananampalataya, Panginoon. Yun po ang aming mitiin. Lord, this is part of your generational blessing na inanda para sa Pilipinas. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's have now our communion. Sabi ng 1 Corinthians 11.23 For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant, it by blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us partake the bread. And let us now take the juice that represents the blood of Jesus. Lord, as I take this communion, I do it in remembrance of you and your victory in the cross and resurrection and the resurrection. I declare that as I drink this cup of your blood and eat your body, my sins are forgiven and my soul is nourished and refreshed and strengthened. I declare that I eat your flesh and drink your blood. I will never be hungry and thirsty for idols again. I declare that I partake your supper, that my not guilty verdict from this court concerning breaking the first commandment will be sealed by the power and testimony of your body and blood. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, God. 